Welcome to Booktopia TV. I'm John Purcell and I'm here with best-selling author Karen Rose to talk about her work in general, but also to um, talk about the upcoming title, Closer Than You Think. Welcome, Karen. Thank you. I had a bit of a look around, a bit of a dig, um, and I noticed a quite a big number um, next to the sales of Karen Rose in Australia. You've sold well over 200,000 copies of your books within Australia alone. Uh, and that is not counting ebooks, I don't know how many. Which is very cool, thank you. Yeah. Uh, my question is, because I also had a bit of a look of, of your bio on, online, how does a chemical engineer become a best-selling author? You know, this, people ask me that question, and um, I, was, I became a chemical engineer because it was a practical thing to do, and the college where I went gave me a full scholarship. That's why I went into engineering. And once I realized I didn't really like it, it was too late. Um, so I became an engineer mainly because I had never thought about being a writer. It was, I knew people wrote books. I knew they just didn't land in the library by magic or the bookshops, but um, I had never really known a writer. And I thought, well, they're all poor. They all live in attics and, you know, and, and, and drink you know, tea from the tea bag they've used a you know, hundred times or something like that. And I wanted to be able to feed my family. So never really thought about being a writer. It was not until I was probably in my late 20s when um, I had started to see these, there was a scene and I knew I had never read it in a book, I had never seen it in a movie. And I kept going through my head and through my head and it would happen when I was at work and people would, you know, Karen, Karen, and it would wake me up and I was like, this is driving me crazy, I'm gonna get fired. So when I was on vacation and it was July of 1993, I remember, I had gone to a friend's house and um, I thought, you know, everybody's taking a nap right now, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna write this scene, I'm gonna get it out of my head, I'm gonna go on with my life. And two, three hours later, my husband came down to find me, he goes, what are you doing? And I was like, I was like totally sucked in. And at that point, it was a hobby, it was kind of my guilty pleasure. My, both my children, were, my, my youngest wasn't even born yet. So I did this for about five years, it was just me. Nobody ever read it, nobody knew I did it, my husband knew. Um, maybe one or two really close friends knew, but it was my hobby. It was just something I did for me, and I couldn't wait to see what these people were going to do next. So I'd bathe the kids, I'd put them to bed, and you know, I'd sit down, I'd write some more. Um, started traveling internationally, and in those days there weren't any ebooks. You had to take, you know, books with you, and I would run out of books, and so I would write my own stories. And I think if there had been an e-reader back in the 90s. I would probably not have become a writer because I probably have been reading too much. Thank goodness um, for that. <laughs> I know, right? I know, it worked out. And it wasn't until um, really late 90s. This went on for about five years in secret. And my husband came home one day. He'd taken the children out to the bookstore um, to, you know, because he would take them to the bookshop and leave me a few hours of time on the weekend so I could have my guilty pleasure. And uh, he came home with this book and it says, How to Market Your Romance Novel, is what it was called. Yeah. I still have it. I kept it for old time's sake. And he says, here, you've been working on this for five years, do something with this book. And that's how I decided to submit it and uh, got an agent and decided it would be something I wanted to do. So five years is a quite intensive training program you know, for I, somebody writing. I think that's one of the things, and I'm grateful for that time, because I think it was one of the reasons I loved to write. When I started writing, I never dreamed anybody would ever read it. And it was when I finally realized I'd sold a book and people were going to read it, I had this moment of, oh my gosh, people are going to read it? <laughs> it was supposed to be just for me, you know, because you, you can't help but put a lot of yourself into the book, yeah. not the serial killer part, but everything else, you know, and, um, you know, people, it's a window into you that it sometimes is not quite comfortable that people have. But uh, I, I didn't have the pressure that I see so many new writers have. I want to get published, I want to get published, I want to sell. Mm. I didn't do it for that reason. I did it because I couldn't wait to see what happened next. And I loved my character. So um, I, I'm grateful for that training time. It, it, allowed me to, it allowed me to find out how I wrote and what my, find your voice, you know, yeah, yeah. kind of thing. What writers were you reading at the time? Were you inspired by writers or was, it, was your writing something completely different to your reading life? I was inspired by writers, but my writing kind of took on a, it, it kind of took on a tone of its own. Um, I was reading a lot of Nora Roberts. I was reading a lot of uh, romantic suspense, which they have in the US. It's not always called that in other countries, but um, there was always a hero and a heroine and a bad guy, you know, kind of yeah. a thing. But I also read a lot of mystery. I read John Grisham. Um, uh, I, I read everything at first, mm. and then I kind of came into, I really liked the whole happy ending that I got in, but I liked the whole 
serial killer, police forensics, the puzzle to solve. I liked that too, so I kind of arrowed in on that. But um, over time, the I think the the stories they became my own. I'm not really sure when that happened, but sometime along those five years it happened. And I wasn't suspense at first. I didn't write thrillers at first. It was my first agent that said, "You have a suspenseful voice. Have you ever considered writing a thriller?" And I went, "Nope. <laughs> I don't know how." But and so I took. It was Tammy Hoag's book that I had just read, and she surprised me at the end. And surprising me at the end was. Um, it was something that didn't happen very often because usually I could guess, you know, by halfway through. And I realized later the trick is she surprised me because I was so interested in the story I forgot to look to see who did it. I forgot to look for the clues. And that's kind of a magician, you know, watch me over here while I do the magic over here. And yeah. that's one of the secrets to writing a good thriller is keep them so wrapped up in the story that they forget to look for clues that sometimes I think are too obvious. Um, but yeah, so, okay, so I took her book apart. I read it forward, and then I read it, I'm an engineer, so, you know. And I read it backwards, I'm like, okay, how did she, how did she fool me? And that's how I, that's, that's how I wrote thrillers. Um, I noticed also that you, in, in, in your, on your website, you've got this plan, this sort of this, this just describe, so that the people, um, it's in Florida, and it's in Chicago, mm -hmm. there's groups, but the characters drift between books, drift between yes. cities. How do you keep all that? Is that, you've got like a spreadsheet or a graph that you go, oh goodness, um, I need to bring so-and-so in. Didn't so-and-so so did this in the other book? They can't have that happening in this one. Like, how do you keep all those people in your head? Um, well, I do have a spreadsheet, but normally I keep track of the children that are born in the spreadsheet. I hate the whole soap opera, you know, he was two years old and all of a sudden he's in, in college, you know? Yeah. So I keep track of people's ages. Sometimes um, secondary characters, Sometimes it works for secondary characters. For example, the the series that I've just set in Cincinnati, um, I didn't intend to bring a character from a past book there. And then I remembered, hey, I left her there. I wonder if she's still, you know, of uh, of heroin age, you know, because if she's too young, too old, you know. And I went back and I'm like, oh yeah, I could use her. So she's going to end up. She's actually in this book that comes coming out soon, and we'll have her own book, you know, in this series. So um, I keep I have a spreadsheet. Um, my uh, assistant has started, I just got an assistant a year ago, and she started keeping them up. I, it was all up here. But then you start to worry, you know, did I, there was one time when I would name all the villains rhyming names, and I didn't realize all my book to book to book, all the villains r names rhymed. And my daughter's like, Mom, you realize that you had, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to change his name. Well, they're going to have to look for the, the villain whose name rhymes with such and such, and they'll know the, they'll know the end. So I do have to, I do have to watch it. and. I have so many characters in my books. I have to watch that I don't, you know, redo names or that I remember somebody's name. But usually, it's all still up there. And um, a reader who picks up one of your books in in the shop and they pick, pick up any of them and read them um, by themselves, so it can be read by themselves. Or? It's always better to start. Yes, you can, because they're all standalone. But it's more fun to start at the beginning or at the beginning of a series. So I just this book that's coming out in a, in a few weeks. It starts a new city, but the last city was four books. And if you started in the first one, you jump into a whole new team, although there are characters from other books who relocate or who have always lived in that city and who are part of the team as well. So if you, if you wanted to you start at the beginning of the city right, yeah. as, as a guide. And the website lays it out. As one, side, one side is the books in reading order and the other side is by city. And so you can pick, oh, okay, well, I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to start with a more recent one yeah. and just pick that city and go. Okay, Rose, thank you very much thank for joining you. us. Thank you. All of Karen Rose's books are available from booktopia.com.au right now.